to say C? How many of you want to say A? Nobody wants to say B? <laughs> okay. Are they still all finishing and starting at the same time? Yeah, yeah, I said that. Yeah, they're all starting and finishing at the same time. And they all completed one rotation at the same time. So we came to the conclusion that they all have the same angular velocity, correct? Mm -hmm. Now we are comparing the linear velocities. Most people give the right answer. Yes, C has the highest linear velocity. Why? Because that guy is going through a greater distance. Isn't it? Yeah. See it in your heads. I don't know. See it. Look at this. Oh, look at what? Okay, great. Somebody's hang, playing witchcraft here. Yeah, 30 degrees, pi by 6, 60 degrees is pi by 3, but generally you only need to know this. Look, degrees multiplied by pi divided by 180. You will get it in radians. That's all you need. Degrees multiplied by pi divided by 180. So you know if it's 180 here, the 180s will get cancelled and you will get it as pi radians, isn't it? Yeah. That's why if it's 90 here, 90 and 180, you will get it as pi by 2 and so on. So this is how you change degrees into radians. You need to know that. Okay. Let's go on. Only the last formula, right? Only the last formula. Because otherwise, we're not, not going to finish it all. All right. Two, oh, I talked about this. It's a repetition, A and B. Which one has the higher velocity, linear velocity, V A or V B? Which is higher? V B. Yeah, because the radius R A is greater than, I mean, the radius R B is greater than, I was not looking at it. R B is greater than R A, so V B is greater than B, okay. Simple. We have talked about this. And we also talked about this. Because if you look at the tires, they have a certain angular speed, right? Yeah. But they also, I mean, the car also has a linear speed because it's going forward. Look at that. Mm -hmm. And you know that if the tires spin faster, that means if the angular speed is higher, that means your car is moving faster. I mean, that's common sense, isn't it? <laughs> because when you start out, the tires are not rotating at all. So what's omega? If it's not moving, what's omega? Zero. Zero. What's uh, the linear velocity? Zero. Zero. Yeah, makes sense. So the faster you go, the faster. Don't make it tough. It's not that tough. So in so many examples, I've tried to prove something. All right. Now, I want you to look at this, the direction of linear velocity the direction of linear velocity is always tangential. Do you know the meaning of a tangent? Okay. So, is the spinning in the clockwise or counterclockwise? Clockwise. clockwise. That's why the tangents are to the right. It's simple to say that, look, if I have a string with a stone at one end, and the string is not very strong, right? It's a flimsy string, and what I do is I go increase the speed, increase the speed, increase the speed, what's going to happen at one point? It's going to break, and my question is, what direction will the stone fly in? Listen to me carefully again. Imagine I don't like you all. That's why I did it in the class, okay? A string, flimsy string with a big stone, okay? And then I go, mm, and it breaks. Question? At the point it breaks, what direction is, does the stone go in? Does it go into the circle, into the center of the circle? Does it go out along the radius? How does it go? Think. How does it go? Think, think before you answer. Everybody can think. I'll give you 10 seconds. Think. Is the question clear? Okay, the question is clear. The stone, in what direction will it go? Will it come towards the center of the circle? Will it go away from the center of the circle? Or is there a third answer? Is there a third? Okay, don't say it. If there's a third answer. How many of you know that there is a third answer? Put your hand up. Yes, and what is that third answer, Andre? Uh, it'll go in any direction. I mean, it just depends. Because right? if you swing it like this, and it's 
say, for instance, I just let go of this. No, no, I'm not letting go of the oh. string. Okay. The string is actually breaking. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, even if the string breaks, it could go any direction. Yeah. It could go any direction. That's what I feel, Samantha. But it, wouldn't it just go tangent to, like, it snaps and it would just go tangent away from the... Oh, so you mean to say that if it breaks right when it's here and I'm going this way, okay? Mm -hmm. This way. If it breaks right when it's here, it'll go tangential to that and hit you, probably? No, it would go, um... Oh, I can't see it. It's tangential, look. Tangential is this. Yeah. That's a circle, tangential. That means it should be touching the circle at one point. And if it breaks when it's here, it'll go. If it breaks when it's here, it'll go. Hey, how many of you understood? That's the answer, it'll go tangential. That's what we were talking about. Why does it go along the tangent? Because that's the direction of the linear velocity. You see that? Okay. That is what I've told you. Now, another thing. This could be the last point of understanding. Newton's first law of motion. Christopher go. I, I saw him put his hand up. So let's give him a chance. Christopher, yeah. An object at rest will remain at rest. An object in motion will remain in motion unless the force is acting upon it. I like what he said, but can you, I mean, it was not perfect on the last part. An object in motion. What kind of motion? Linear. Linear motion. Can somebody make that part clear? Because that's not Newton's first law. Well, it's not exact. In a particular direction? Mm, yeah. Net force is a, has to be All right, net force is there, but there is another thing that I'm looking for in Newton's first law. Constant speed. Constant velocity. All right, let me tell you this. Otherwise, we miss out on this. An object in motion in a straight line with a constant speed, will continue to do so unless acted upon by a force. Let me give you an example. I roll a ball here. Will it stop after some time? No, it, it's not hitting the wall. It just keeps going. I mean, this room just keeps going. That's what I meant. If we're so. rejecting, rejecting friction and air resistance. Yeah, but if we don't, it'll stop. it'll stop. Why did it stop? Because of friction and air resistance, right? Okay, wasn't this object moving in a straight line? Yeah. Listen to me now. It was moving in a straight line, and it stopped. Now let's change it a little bit. There is still no friction, but there is suddenly a wind blowing as it goes. There's a wind blowing from the right to the left. What will happen? It will change its direction. Did a force act on it? Yeah. Okay, so if a force acts on it, it may not change its speed. I mean, the number might be the same, but it changed its direction. Right? Yeah. All right. So what if the wind is crazy? It's like this. It never happens in real life. Just imagine that the wind goes like in a hurricane. Round and round. How will that object go? Mm -hmm. Right? Correct? Mm -hmm. So if an object is moving in a circular path, isn't it continuously moving away from a straight line? Oh, what's a circle? What is a circle? A circle is actually a continuous movement away from a straight line. How many understood that? Let's see. Yeah. I mean, it's not even, not even for a bit is it moving in a straight line. It just says, no. Isn't that a circle? Mm -hmm. So if you were listening to me, now you understand that there must be a continuous force acting on it. Because didn't we say that if an object changes direction, there must be a force acting on it? Yeah. So what if an object continuously changes its direction? There's a continuous force acting on it, right? Mm -hmm. And that is called the centripetal force. It's called the centripetal. Okay, let's get that word. That comes from the word center. This is a Greek word that says two words. You know the meaning of two words? Thank you. Towards the center. So the force is acting towards the center of the circle. So the centripetal force is a force that acts towards the center of a circle. Right? Okay, watch. I'm not going to show you the derivation. I'm, I don't want to derive and all that. Watch this and see whether you understand. Okay. The object is that, no, first, is this going clockwise or counterclockwise? Counterclockwise. 
the object is at C. What's the direction of its velocity? I mean linear velocity okay. along the tangent. Haven't we talked about that? It's along the tangent. V2 is along the tangent. What's the direction of the force acting on it at that point? Is there a force acting on it? Yes, any object moving in a circle has a centripetal force acting on it, right? What's the direction of the force acting on it? I just told you. Why is it called the centripetal force? It acts towards the center. So why are you hesitating to tell me that the force is acting along the radius towards the center? You see that? Okay, the object is at B. What's the direction of the linear velocity? Along the tangent. See that? What's the direction of the force acting on it? Yeah. Along the radius towards the center. Did you get it? Yeah. Okay, so what's the angle between the velocity and the force? What's the angle between them? I'm showing you. That's the velocity, the green one. That's the centripetal force. What's the angle between the radius and the tangent, guys? Who said it? You. Thank you. 90 degrees. The force is always at 90 degrees. That's why the number doesn't change. You see, it'll always be going at 10 meter per second. You see that? 10 meter per second. The number doesn't change. It's always 10. Now you can see why. Because the force is pushing at 90 degrees. Did you get it? Number doesn't change. Only the direction changes. So, conclusion. If ever you see an object going in a circle, you know a force acts on it. What's that force called? Thanks. So can we talk about it when the Earth is going around the sun? Is that circular motion? Yeah. So there must be a centripetal force, isn't it? Yeah. What is that centripetal force in that case? Right. Gravitational force. Very good. Second example. Remember this crazy example of a string and a stone at one end? I've said that like 100 times today. All right. Is it going around in a circle, the stone? Yes. So should there be a centripetal force? Yes. yes. What's the centripetal force in this case? My hand. No. My goodness. The force. I'm, talk I'm not asking who is applying the force. I'm asking you, what is the force? Like gravitation in the last case? Somebody will say it, I'm sure. How is the string? Is it going to be straight, taut, or is it going to be like coiled? Straight. straight. Why? Thanks, because there is tension in the string. So in this case, it's tension in the string, which is a centripetal force. Third example, your car is taking a curve, right? If there was no force, you would keep going straight, and the road turns left. That's the last time we'll see you. Goodbye. But that doesn't happen, because there is a force. What is the centripetal force in this case? That keeps you going around that curve. Ah, say it. Friction. friction. I gave you the third example. It's friction. But sometimes friction is not enough. That's why this is what they do. If this is the road, they don't keep it flat. Haven't you seen it? This is called banking. Haven't you seen it? When the curve is to the left this way now, right? So you see that the outer side of the road is just a little bit higher. That's called banking. Now, can you make out that when you do that, you're going to get a component of the force in this direction that keeps you on the road? Especially if it's a sharp curve. If it's, a, if it's not so sharp, don't worry, I'll return it. If, if it's not sharp, it's okay. Which one of this is a sharper curve? Let's see, Hadi, you know that. One or two, which one is a sharp curve? Two. two. All right, okay, okay. So which one has a bigger radius? Bigger radius. So now you know a sharp curve has a... Thanks. There's a lot of stuff going on here, guys. A sharp curve has a smaller radius. Did you see that? Keep that in your mind. So where would you need more banking? I mean, where would you need to tilt the road more? Is it on a sharp curve or not so sharp one? Common sense. Sharp. So if it's a sharper curve, you would see the road go, hmm? If it's not so sharp, yeah. 
Did you understand what's going on? I gave you three examples for centripetal force, right? Now I'm going to give you the formula for centripetal force without any derivations. I'm just going to throw it at you. But look at this. Look at the left-hand side. What is it? Centripetal acceleration. If you put a C there, that means centripetal acceleration. What's the formula? Read it. Velocity squared divided by the... That's all you need to know. So that's the centripetal acceleration. Write that down, please. And then Miguel is going to give me the formula for centripetal force from that. I've told you this is the centripetal acceleration, right? Mm -hmm. And you're going to give me the formula for centripetal force. For which you've got to think, force and acceleration. What's the relation between them? That's what you should think, you know? Don't say it, don't say it. It's just chance. If you have the acceleration, how do you find the force? How many know it? Let me see your hands. Three, four. If you have the acceleration, how do you find the force? Is my question. We've used that a hundred times. Come on. Let's see the hands again. Yeah, the net force. The net force. When I say the net force. How many know it? Don't say it. Don't say it. How many know it? How many know it? Ah, thanks, thanks, thanks. Brittany Rhymes, what's the answer? Am I pointing at the wrong person, calling the wrong name? Who is Brittany Rhymes? <laughs> yeah, I was looking at her and she said I was calling the wrong person. I was totally confused. Brittany, come on. Multiply by the mass. Multiply by the mass. So give me the formula for centripetal force. So I can write it down. Centripetal force. Brittany, go ahead. Mass. Mass. Finished. So the mass of what? Oh, wait. Remember the stone and the string example? Yeah. Is it my mass? No. Or the mass of the stone? The mass of the stone. Thanks. Keep that in mind all the time. So when your car goes around the curve, the mass, what mass are we talking about? Is the it mass the mass of the road? Car. Or the mass of the engineer who built the road? The the <laughs> it's crazy. The mass of the... Car. Okay. So if your car is fully loaded, like your whole family is in it, in the trunk? And is that how you travel? Oh, and, and the trunk. Me and I thought you all traveled in the trunk. That's a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> and the trunk. Anyway, so the mass has gone up, right? In that case, what do you think about the centripetal force? Will it be greater or smaller? Greater. Yeah. So if you're alone, you've got to be more careful now. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm, we'll see. We'll come to that. We'll do problems in a bit, and then you will see. All right, I wrote it down again in green and in orange so you will never miss it. Look at it. Centripetal acceleration is V squared by R. Centripetal force is mass times V squared by R. That's all we've been talking about. Nothing else. Simple stuff. And everybody got it. Yeah, we talked about this. I uh, just wanted you to see that the direction of linear velocity is along the tangent. And acceleration, can you see that? Can you see the arrow pointing down towards the center? Yes. You, okay, I just wanted you to see that. Same thing here. Same thing here. Can you see the acceleration towards the center? Yes. There, can you see that? But yet, the velocity is along the tangent, and they are always at 90 degrees to each other, right? Yes. yes. Two questions. Make out. Didn't I say if the radius is big, <coughs> then the force is what? Uh, uh, you got to look at this formula. You got to look at this formula. Centripetal force. How are they? The radius is down in the denominator. Force is here, right? So if the radius becomes small, come on. This will be mm -mm. big because it's in the denominator. Okay, you divide a number by 1. Divide the number by 10. Where will you get a greater number? 100 divided by 1, and 100 divided by 10. So, 100 divided by 1 is greater, right? Smaller radius, bigger the number. All right, smaller radius, watch. Smaller radius, bigger the centripetal force. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay, 
bigger radius, smaller the centripetal force. It's all making sense, everything. Okay, when you're... Let's say that I was the engineer, and I forgot to bank a road. You know what banking is? But I had to have the outer side tilted, right? I didn't do it. I did not do it. So it's a flat road. Do you have any chance of staying on the road? If you're dry, good. If you're going slow enough, you will stay on the road. So what's keeping you on the road? Even if there's no banking, what's keeping you on the road? Friction, right? So can we get a formula for that? We're going to. All right, here we go. We know the formula for centripetal force. Don't begin writing immediately. Understand. Don't we know the formula for centripetal force? Yes. Okay, what is that? Hey, Eamon is talking. She can talk. Yeah, mv squared by r. And what's the formula for friction? Uh, constant times uh, uh, force. Very good. What's that constant called? Mu. 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 The sound made by a cat. No, no, no. What's that called? The coefficient of friction, right? Never mind. You said mu times the normal force? Okay. On a flat road, what is the normal force? Thanks. See, if you have an object on a flat surface, then its weight acting down is exactly the same as the normal force acting up, right? Okay, that's why you see this on the right side. But what is mu s? What's mu s? Static friction. Okay, static friction. Now you can write, hopefully you understood. Otherwise you're wasting time, ink, and money. Or waste. So because of my stories, who can substitute for the normal force in the next step? I already said it. Thanks, go ahead. Go ahead, Jordan, put it. V squared by R is equal to mu S times mg. Okay, what's the next thing you do? Cancel it, Lisette. Go, cancel it. Cancel what? Cancel everything, get zero. Cancel the masses. Cancel the masses, because it's on both sides, isn't it? Cancel the masses. Okay, I'm trying to say that, all right, cancel. Make V squared the subject. Go before me. Write it before I do. Make V squared the subject. What do you get? Mu S? Mu S equals... Um, no, no, V squared is equal to... She made it MS. Okay, mu S. That's okay. Mu S, I always do that. It looks like an M. Yeah, I know. Mu S, not divided by radius, it'll become multiplied by, then it goes to the other side. That's right? Yes. Okay. So find out at what speed you can drive if the radius is 100 meters and mu S is 0.1. Go ahead. At what speed can you drive if mu S is, oh, 0.1 is too small. Uh, mu S is 0.5. Take it as 0.5, and the radius of the curve is 100 meters. That's easy. So all you got to do is put those numbers in. 0.5 times, yes? Oh, you have got the answer. I hope you did not forget to take the square root. You did take the square root because most students forget. You did? Oh, good. You're fast. What's the answer? 25. Or, yeah. 25. 25 unit. Mangoes. Hippos. 25.1. 22.1. They are saying you're saying 25. Maybe use GS10. Um, you have to use GS9.8, right? 22.1? Okay, how many got 22.1? Okay, good. Meter per second, isn't it? What happens if you drive faster than that? There's no banking. There's no banking. If you drive faster than that, what's going to happen? You may not crash, but you'll go off the road, right? And then you crash. <laughs> of course, finally you do. She wants it to crash. Okay, agree. It crashes. Can you, can you give another example for this? We're going to have several examples.